Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect, starting with the 144,000, right, as well as the large multitude whom the Lord will have mercy on. All right. The Israelites scattered throughout the four corners of the earth through a remnant will be gathered back. All right. And ultimately perfected. All right. Which is a fulfillment of the second covenant and return to the land. All right. Eastward in Eden. All right. To establish a righteous government known as the Tabernacle of David. All right. That righteousness. All right. And the law, statutes, and commandments are taught worldwide through the four corners of the earth and the earth will be turned back to, to paradise which is Idan in the holy scriptures Eden starting at the garden eastern Eden which is in Jerusalem I wanted to do a uh, response to this video done by the priest Tazama all right of the great millstone Dallas camp soldier of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai is his page Make sure you subscribe to the priest's page and get edified. The title of this video, all right, is John the Baptist fell out of the truth because of pride. These dudes are bugging. And I'm not going to play the video, but um, as you can see here, um, who it is in this video, all right, um, none other than the ISUPK. And basically, um, in this lesson, all right, a question was asked about John the Baptist. And uh, basically, the teacher, the ones teaching the class, said that John the Baptist pretty much, you know, fell out of the truth because of his pride, all right? And that, you know, the fact that he didn't follow Yahweh Shai, all right, is proof that uh, ultimately... He wasn't right. He wasn't a man of the Lord, which this is a bugged out doctrine. Um, but I just wanted to get into a few points, you know, concerning John the Baptist and you individuals who follow this. Because when you look at this video, there's 110 likes. I'm pretty sure there's more now and I'm not going to it. You know, I'm not for to play their video. Um, but 110 likes, meaning there's Israelites wiggling around Babylon the Great. All right, you know, with the mindset that John the Baptist, all right, you know, the predecessor, the one who came and had to come, who was prophesied to come pursuant to the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, you know, Isaiah, the 40th chapter and a few other places, you know, he was prophesied to come, all right, and bear witness, you know, of the coming of the Messiah, who he baptized, all right, and John the Baptist all right, the fact that he wasn't one of the 12 uh, disciples or wasn't a disciple of Yahweh Shai does not mean he wasn't in the truth because ultimately, as we get the scripture here, John had his course. Let's get that in the book of uh, Acts, the, the uh, 13th chapter. All right, Acts, the 13th chapter. Give me one second here, Salakia. Acts 13. And let's start at around 20, all right, four, all right, it says, when John, speaking of John the Baptist, before Yahweh Shai came, if you read in uh, NLT, John the Baptist, all right, preached that all the people of Israel, all right, needed to repent of their sins, all right, and turn to the most high and be baptized all right so when john had first preached okay before yahweh shah is coming all right the baptism of repentance to all the people of israel showing you that that message of repentance was always all right and only to the nation of israel and as john finished his course all right his course he said, whom think ye that I am? I am not he, all right? Meaning he was telling the people that he wasn't the Messiah, but he preached of the Messiah to come. 
But behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. So when you look at this word course, John finished his course. All right, his course, the word is what? All right, dromos. Okay, dromos. And we never hear any scripture where Yahweh Shai, even after John the Baptist's death, speak ill will of John the Baptist. Okay, course, all right, in the New Testament, figuratively, the course of life or office. So John's office, all right, was to do what? Prepare the way. All right, prepare the way for Yahweh Shai through telling the Jews, all right, to prepare, baptize themselves, get themselves prepared for the one who was coming, and that was Yahweh Shai. So that was his office, that was his lot, that was his course. All right, that's what he was born to do. He was not born to be, all right, one of the disciples of Yahweh Shai. His lot and purpose was to what? Be at the forefront, all right. Let's see here, his course, all right. Um, let's see here, metaphor, runner, race, doctrine, and so forth. And if John the Baptist didn't do what he did, all right, then, all right, prophecy would be offset and Yahweh Shai's uh, wouldn't have come. So he had to come, all right. That's why ultimately when we get the, uh, the account, Right in the book of Luke, Luke, the uh, first chapter. This is Luke. All right, let's see here. Mary visits Elizabeth, all right, which Yahweh Shai and John the Baptist were cousins. So, this is when Mary, after she got you know the uh, prophecy from the angel Gabriel that she was going to be the one, you know, ultimately the vessel chosen. To bring forth the seed that would bear the Messiah Okay, because she wasn't, you know um, Pregnant at that time But as time went Ultimately here in verse 39 And Mary arose in those days And went into the hill country Alright, with haste into the city of Judah And entered into the house of Zacharias And saluted Elizabeth Alright And it came to pass that when Elizabeth Heard the salutation of Mary Alright the babe in her womb, all right, leaped, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, all right, so the babe that was in Elizabeth's womb, which was John the Baptist, leaped, okay, and I'll read it in NLT, and Elizabeth, which that was John the Baptist, the babe leaped, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. All right. Why am I so honored that the mother of the Lord should visit me? All right. So they understood that they were both ultimately fulfilling prophecy because John was prophesied. Let's get it real quick. <clears throat> the one that cried in the wilderness. Let's see here. Let's see here. This is uh, Matthew, speaking of John the Baptist, Matthew 11 and 9, it says, But what went ye out to see? All right. A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he, this is Yahweh Shai speaking of John the Baptist. All right. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So John's lot course was to prepare the way all right before Yahweh Shai okay which goes back to an ancient custom but let's uh find it out find out where is that in the scriptures all right Isaiah 40 and 3 the voice of him that cried in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord now what did John the Baptist do as he grew up all right he belonged to a priestly family all right that was actually all right his father and his mother all right, were descendants of the high priest Aaron, which was Moses' brother. All right, remember, particular of the Jews had the records of their lineage. So Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, all right, belonged to a uh, priestly line that goes right back to Aaron, and so did his mother. Okay, so 
ultimately as the temple was being corrupted you know the lord still had preserved all right remnants all right chosen all right to do his bidding so as john the baptist grew up if you notice he separated from the temple and he went into the wilderness to preach okay he went into the wilderness to preach and his purpose of going into the wilderness was to do what prepare ye the way of yahweh bashim yahushai make straight in the desert a highway all right for our god and john had many followers okay uh peter and his brother andrew were followers of john the baptist okay before uh they followed yahweh shai okay Ma malachi three and one Be behold i will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant which that's yahweh shai whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith Yahweh the Lord of hosts. But before he came, the messenger who will go into the wilderness, which happens to be pursuant to Malachi 4 and 5, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of, the, of Yahweh. Okay? That was John the Baptist. Elijah the prophet, all right, came back as John the Baptist. Okay? Um, let's see here. Matthew three and three. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, "The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight." Okay, so that's that was John the Baptist's job. Okay, to to make the path straight, prepare the way of Yahweh Shai. He was speaking of Yahweh Shai's coming. He was telling the people as he was baptizing, "Look." I baptize you with water, all right? But he that comes after me is going to baptize you, all right, with, with uh, fire and with the Holy Spirit, man. He was going to baptize you in a way that I can't because you have to understand John the Baptist, all right, um, John the Baptist, as a matter of fact, let's see here, let's, get, let's go here, all right, boom. Matthew 3 and 3, for this is he that was spoken of by all right, Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, all right, make his path straight. And this same John had his raiment of camel's hair and leather and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and honey. Then went out him to Jerusalem and Judea and all the regions round about Jordan, all right, and where uh baptized and were baptized of him in the Jordan confessing their sins so John the Baptist's job was to prepare the way all right and as you can see he had a leathern girdle about his loins which when you go to that all right that's the same thing Elijah the prophet had second Kings 1 and 8 and they answered him he was a this is a hairy man all right and a girt with a girdle of leather about his loins and he said it is Elijah the Tishbite all right <laughs> and ultimately um ultimately the, the, he even wore the same clothing when he came back as john all right and the messiah himself all right lets us know what let's go to matthew 11 and 14. what did he say of john matthew 11 and 14 and if you are willing to accept what I say, he is Elijah, the one the prophet said will come. This is out of the mouth of Yahweh Shai. All right, the, 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 as Yahweh Shai said out of his mouth, the greatest prophet. All right, the greatest prophet, man. And the scriptures didn't say that John the Baptist would be least in the kingdom of heaven, as that dude that ISUPK said. All right, if you, if you read what it said, see here. Matthew 11 and 11, I tell you of a truth of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. He's the greatest prophet pursuing. He's at the forefront of the prophets. That's why when he was born, his father, who couldn't speak, all right, started to prophesy. All right. His coming marks the coming of the prophets. And it came and happened in his day. 
all right, through a man by the name of Abba Bivens, and we believe that through faith. He had to come back today as well and be at the forefront of this great awakening to turn the hearts of the, 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 the uh, fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the father. If he doesn't come, all right, then our ministry is in vain, and the mouth of the prophets open up at his coming. So Yahweh Shah is saying there is no greater prophet than John the Baptist, yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greatest than greater than he because when we get into the kingdom of heaven when we get into our perfection we'll be what all right per perfect okay and john the baptist is of the the uh, 144,000 john the baptist is of the elect it's just that when he came in that lot okay as john the baptist all right he wasn't to be a follower in a sense of one of the 12 disciples of yahweh shah he had his lot he had his order okay and again Yahweh Shai never spoke ill of him. All right. Now, when you get John the third chapter, okay, let's get John the third chapter. All right. As a matter of fact, let's read 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, prophesied of what? Okay. The, the coming of Yahweh Shai as a man. When you read in the law, all right, Moses told you he was to come. All right, there's various scriptures in the Torah that prophesied of the coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Shiloh talked about in Genesis, the 49th chapter. Okay, many of the prophets, Zechariah 9 and 9, talked about our king coming lowly on a, on a donkey. Okay, Micah, all right, the, uh, the uh, fourth or fifth chapter, the fifth chapter talks about, all right, the one coming out of the loins and lineage of David that was going to be king. He had to come and be born, all right, to ultimately grow up and be that sacrifice that would bring us back to the Lord. But there was an order to his coming, all right? Ultimately, John had to do what? Prophesy, and he was the final prophet, all right, in a sense, to prophesy of his coming as a man. So that's what it means by all the prophets in the law prophesied unto John. A lot of people may think that this means that John the Baptist was the last prophet. No, he was the last prophet to prophesy of Yahweh Shai's actually coming as a man. All right. Mem mem remember, you go into the prophets. It talked about a child. To us, a child is born. Isaiah 7 and 14. It talked about a woman. All right. Of marriageable age, a young woman who would bring forth the, the, the Messiah. OK, so all of those prophecies were fulfilled when he was born. And John the Baptist was the final prophet. All right. That would what? be the one to prepare the way and say he's here okay because he baptized the messiah okay matthew 3 and 13 then come at yahweh shot from galilee to jordan unto john to be baptized of him okay but john forbade him saying i have need to be baptized of thee and 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 comest thou to me to be baptized Let's read this in the nlt but john tried to talk him out of it I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? All right. So really, when you look at this, as John was a, a descendant of that priestly lineage that descended from Aaron, when you look at how uh, the sons of Aaron were prepared, all right, by Moses, they were what? Washed. Let's see if we can find that real quick. All right. Where Moses... You know, Exodus 29 and 4. And Aaron and his sons shall thou bring into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. That was a, 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 you know, a custom. You know, baptism goes all the way back to the law. Exodus 40 and 12. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. Okay. And Leviticus 8 and 6. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. So this was a custom that always was centered around the duties of a high priest, which we know Yahweh Shai is our high priest. So John the Baptist, being of that priestly lineage that extended from Aaron, all right, his duty was to baptize the Messiah. Why would a man who's not in the truth be chosen, all right, a man who, who would eventually fall out of the truth be chosen to baptize our Messiah? Okay? And John the Baptist understood, okay, understood as as he said he must increase i must decrease he understood the importance of the messiah 
basically this was kind of like a transfer of the uh, priesthood from the Levitical, which John the Baptist left the temple, went to the wilderness, all right, and preached of the new high priest that was to come. Okay, John never waxed proud against Yahweh Shai. Okay, so John, uh, in his humility, is like, "Why are you coming to me to be baptized?" But Yahweh Shai said, "It must be done, for we must carry out all that God requires." So John agreed to baptize him. Okay, and after he baptized him. A voice came from heaven and said, this is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy. All right. Which that's Yahweh Shai. Okay. This all happened after John the Baptist baptized him. Okay. And what did John say? He must increase. I don't know exactly where it is. Let me just look it up here. John says here. All right. John the third chapter. All right. Let's just read it here. Because when you read this chapter, when you read this, this is John's final testimony. John's last testimony. OK. So here. All right. John, the apostle, the one who wrote the book of Revelations, the one who wrote this uh, gospel of John, he's giving you the record of John the Baptist's last testimony. And we're going to read his final words. But as you read here, okay, he's going and, you know, John was cast into prison. All right. And this was John's words. He that had the bridegroom, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Wait a minute. Let's read here. Let's read in the NLT. Verse 28. Ye yourselves know how plainly I told you I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. See, that was John's course. That was his ministry. Okay? It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. All right? And who's the bridegroom? The bridegroom is Yahweh Shai. He's the one who's going to marry the bride, the church. And the, the best man, the friend of the bridegroom, which was John the Baptist, is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. So John the Baptist was ultimately the friend of the bridegroom, which you can find that allegory in the book of, uh, let's see here, John the third chapter as well. All right, but it go, it's, I believe it's in another place as well, but we don't have time to go into that. But it goes into ancient customs of how marriage was done. But the friend of the bridegroom, all right, handled all of the duties of, you know, preparing the, the banquet and, you know, the talking between two parties. And ultimately, that's John the Baptist and the prophets who are who are who are ultimately set with the duty. All right. Of preparing the mind of the, the you know, the the uh, the bride, you know, and, and, and getting things ready for the wedding. John the Baptist was not the bridegroom. He was the best man in the sense he was the best friend of the bridegroom. So how in the hell he ain't in the truth when, when, when he's the best man? <laughs> but when you read, and John was, he was happy with that. And then he was put to death, all right, in the truth. He was beheaded. John 3 and 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. So John here is telling you Yahweh Shah's ministry, his priesthood is going to increase. All right. But the priesthood dealing with the baptism that goes after the sons of Aaron, that would decrease. He that it, that cometh from above, above is above all. He understood that Yahweh Shai was the high priest from the heavens. See? He that is of the earth is earthly. See? That Levitical priesthood was only, all right, a, a, a fashion of an even greater priesthood that goes back to something in the heavens, man. Even Moses' tabernacle that was built was built after the pattern of something that was already in the heavens. So he that cometh from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth, and he that cometh from heaven, all right, is from heaven, is above all. So he understood the importance of Melchizedek. He understood that Yahweh Shai was the priest of the Most High God who was down in the earth in the flesh. All right? 
and what he have seen and heard that he testified and no man received his testimony all right so as you keep reading let's see here this is john final let's get john the baptist's final all right his final testimony all right his last recorded testimony which we have all right via the book of john all right it says which john is the, the best friend of yahweh shai that was his favorite disciple he said this is john the baptist's final words he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not see life all right but the wrath of the most high abideth upon him so so here it is verse 35 the father loveth the son and have given all things into his hand john the baptist never denied the lord okay there was a point when he was in prison okay and his disciples came to him and he was like go ask you know because you know he wasn't there on earth you know he wasn't there on earth he wasn't there all right to see certain miracles and things like that so as he's in prison all right he you know his disciples came to him and he you know uh pretty much they asked he asked him to go ask Yahweh Shai something. But that didn't mean that John the Baptist wasn't in the truth, man. John the Baptist was in the truth. John the Baptist never fell out of the truth. His last recorded message is that what? The Father loveth the Son and have given all things into his hand, and he that believeth on the Son have everlasting life. So this garbage that's being brought forth by you individuals, talking about john the baptist fell out of the truth that is a lie that is absolute madness and if you don't repent okay you're going to be destroyed man you got hundreds and thousands of israelites pushing this garbage and then one of your elders one of your, your representatives goes on to the adam 22 podcast the the, the no jumper podcast all right, the same dude who allowed his wife to get plowed. The dude who, 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 who wife got plowed by a, a porn star and he interviewed the wife and the husband and talks about how he does orgies and with his woman and, you know, uh, you know, threesomes and foursomes with other women and his woman. And, and you know, the, 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 why would you go on to that podcast? Oh, man, we got to have the truth be spread. Why would you go on that podcast, bro? This is the type of madness that you so-called leaders are doing in Israel. And then when we say something, we're tripping. Captain Tazari, I'll go no jumper. Hey, y'all. As I turn my go to the center from New York, I just landed in L.A. And just got a text from my man, WAC 100. We will be on no jumper tomorrow, 12 noon. I believe it's... Uh, I That's all we need to hear. WAC 100 disrespected the scriptures, disrespected the Bible, and you, so, so, so at this point, man, where we are with it, okay, it's just time for judgment, enough talking, man, and John the Baptist didn't fall out of the truth, all right, that is a false accusation, that is a wicked doctrine, all right, and y'all better repent before you destroy, man, I'm gonna leave that there, hopefully y'all edified on to the next show.